hello so today i will discuss about uh, this uh, h2o model uh, like fitting a deep learning model in h2o framework so what is h2o so h2o is very fast and a scalable open source machine learning platform and several algorithms are available in it like random forest gradient boosting deep learning etc so if you just fit any model in r and you fit the same model in h2o like fitting a random forest in planar and fitting a random forest in h2 h2o then you will see the timing difference of fitting the same model will be very large so h2 is very fast and it will take very less time in fitting the same model so that is the use of uh, using an h2o and also it is very scale scalable if you if you have more number of rows and you are increasing the number of rows by that uh, it's uh, it is scaled the time linearly not 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 quadratically or too much so you can consider h2 as a fast very fast and a scalable thing and i will go through the deep learning model here and i will get uh, tell you about what are the parameters associated with this thing right there are a lot of parameters and you need to go through all those things so if you have not seen my last video on neural networks in r you should go through that so that uh, you need not go through all these things till this and i will begin telling in detail about how to start h2 and how to fit the model deep learning model in h2 in till from here right so but i will go through what uh, what data i am taking is that is stored in uh, live uh, package mass so library mass and you need to have uh, the h2o package you can install it using install dot packages h2o so once you have installed it like that and uh, you can import this library h2o if you see that it gives no error then you should be happy about it that you have the h2o package with you now so you have imported these two packages so mass package will be having the data which we are interested in and we are interested in the data host here right so we will store it we can check this data here right here all this data and also you can have a look on the data by writing the help boston so it has 506 rows 14 columns and we want to predict med v value on the basis of the rest of the variables right so i have already done the same thing in the neural networks in r using the neural net package you should go through that and then you should go through this video so that you have a good understanding about uh, uh, what's the difference between these two and how how the timing difference is between these two kinds of models in H2 and all those things. So you can see the structure of data frame and uh, you have these numeric values and all these things and we want to predict mid V. You can plot the histogram mid V. Seems like almost a Gaussian kind of distribution but not perfectly Gaussian but you can approximate it like this because in deep learning we have to fit the you, we have to tell about what distribution is it and what loss function we are trying to optimize and what metric we need to optimize for so let's go through and so that we don't make any kind of delay in starting that so apply data frame to range that will give the low and high values so med v is between 5 to 50 as you can see in the histogram also here 5 to 50 minimum is 5 and maximum is 50 you can normalize the data normalizing the data means you have different variables like there here crim z and all these we want to normalize the values in each of the variables so that the mean value in any of the uh, variable is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 so for that you have to use this function min max value min value and this i have explained this in the last video neural networks but now the, the point here which we trying to explain is about what is h2o and how to initialize it 
H2O cluster in R and uh, how you can fit the model so I am giving a very precise uh, video on this so that you can have a uh, beginning on this H2O and you can start fitting the model on any kind of data so if you have any CSV file you can really read it in that uh, using the read.csv function and the rest of the things will be remaining the same I have used the inbuilt function that is the uh, Boston data but you can use it for any kind of data now use the function h2o.init like this now say if you want to know what is h2o is right you need to you should know that in h2o everything starts with h2o dot and if you want to know say init what is h2o dot init write question mark and hit control enter you will write see on the right hand side it says initialize and connect to h2o so if you want to connect the r to uh, h2o cluster you need to use this function h2o dot init it will tell about all those parameters which i have used here ip port and mem size i will explain you here so ip we are using the local machine i am using a windows uh, machine with 8 gigabytes of ram so ip you have to write localhost if you are using in aws amazon or uh, cloud based server then you have to change the ip and port so accordingly but i am using a local machine to fit it so you can you have to write the local host and port you have to write 54321 or anything the port you have and the max mem size will be like this 2650m so i am using 2650 megabytes of my ram available in my machine local machine i have 8000 megabytes of ram out of which i am using 2650 megabytes of ram you should not use all of the ram which is available to the system so you should uh, at least leave uh, 1 gigabytes or maybe 800 megabytes of ram for the processing uh, of the background processing for your machine so this function will start the h2o cluster so here you can see r is connected to the h2o cluster it tells everything total nodes what uh, 2.3 gigabytes of ram i'm using out of 8 gigabytes how many cores i have four cores allowed cores are two and all these things so right ip address port which i've given here if you want to use it uh, for more advanced things so you can just uh, write comma h2 dot in it hit tab and you will see all the options available right now you write the target name which is the y as medv target name and then x which is having the predictor names i'm using the set diff function which will be taking the difference between the column names of data frame all the column names except the y which is the target variable so x and y these two things will be used in the deep learning model it asks for x and y and the training data frame again what you want to do if you want to see that how good the model has uh, been fitted for the unknown data set you can just do this uh, training and data uh, training data frame and test data frame splitting the whole data into two parts training and testing data 